we are going to start soon. Okay, um, if we could have everybody just type in the chat where they're calling from. That would be great. Awesome. Arizona, LA. Cool, all over. That's awesome. All right, so today, um, this is really meant to be a Q&A where you all get to ask the questions you wanna hear answers to. Um, I will kick us off by asking our um, lovely folks to introduce themselves and ask some like more generic questions about kind of their journey to how they got to where they're at now. Um, but please, please write some questions in the chat because we will jump to those as soon as they um, come through. And then aside from that, for those of you that have not enrolled in foundations yet, this is gonna be super awkward for me to keep doing my hand motions in my Avocado <laughs> costume. But um, for those of you that have not enrolled in foundations yet, um, Sadi is gonna share a coupon code in the chat that expires uh, tonight for Halloween. So just keep an eye on that if you're, if you're live and it's Halloween. For those of you maybe watching on YouTube, it's Halloween, that is why. <laughs> I'm subjected to this avocado <laughs> costume today. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. Courtney, why don't you kick us off? Um, maybe share a little bit about what you were doing before you transitioned into UX and then what you're doing now. Like what, what's your current job? Sure. So before UX, um, I had two backgrounds. So I graduated with a degree in marketing and worked at a marketing agency for about two years right out of college. And then after that, I actually worked as an executive assistant to CEO for about five years. Um, so no like linear path for me. But right now I am a product designer at Earnest, which some of you may know, it's um, a student loan company. And I work specifically on their product called going Mary. Oh, and I'll pass it to Blaine. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Blaine Johannes, and I started, when did I start UX? Maybe a year ago, believe it or not. Um, I was a patient experience advocate at MedStar Franklin Square, so I, my background is mostly in healthcare and healthcare administration. I also was an executive assistant administrator for about four and a half years to CEO, so that gave me a lot of practice, especially when discussing certain topics with different types of executive um, level individuals, but I found UX and I found Avocadomy through TikTok and that's why I'm here today. So thank you. Um, I think, okay. okay. Oh, go ahead, Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm Kelly. Um, so I also don't have a linear path, but just to briefly sum up, I made four career changes. So I'm in, I came from a bachelor degree in biotechnology. I did laboratory work. I did dermatology, so medical assistance, um, as well as um, housing advocacy and something other other things in between. So I have a lot of work gaps in my um, in my history. But I found UX through a another UX designer who's my friend, and I actually uh, did a usability test with her, and I was like, "This is so cool! What do you do for a living?" And then after that, I you know, looked online and as maybe you guys all know, like Avocadomy is the best deal. So, and I found, I, I think I was probably texting Maka around like Christmas time. I was like, tell me more about Avocadomy and the rest is history. <laughs> awesome. And then, yeah, Kelly, do you want to share where you're currently? Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I am a product designer um, at a, a company called Zeta Global, which is an AI marketing SaaS company. So super fun. <laughs> cool. Um, we don't see any questions yet. So I'll ask the, the first question. Um, oh, actually, we have a question here from Tim. Um, what is the most dis difficult soft skill you have had to learn that you use often or benefit from having? Uh, Courtney, do you want to kick us off? Sure. Yeah. Um, 
I would say one that you really only get through experience, whether it's UX or just corporate in general, is kind of learning how to be a self-starter. Um, my role right now is very hands-off in terms of uh, the relationship with my manager, which is great, but it also means that I'm kind of doing a lot of research on my own and have to make sure I'm keeping my priorities and deadlines in line. So that's definitely a skill um, that I'm glad that I got in previous job experiences that I've been able to transfer well to product designer. And then I would say the other one, of course, is communication, um, which is something that is important, like in all areas of life, but specifically when you're having to communicate like design decisions and communicate with higher ups in the company, that's something that you might not get a lot of practice of until you start doing yeah. Um, I'll go to Kelly. Um, so one thing is that when you go through UX, you know, after uh, when you get hired as a UX design, you think you personally think, oh, use, user experience is like really important. And um, one thing that my company is that we're just starting to um, really advocate for users and advocate for research. And so um, a soft skill is being able to understand like someone who doesn't have that background and also communicating like why this is important in a way that you know that they understand. So I talk to PMs often and I um, right now I'm actually through a research project where I'm talking to like really high up people and they don't really understand. They're like, oh, well, how does it benefit like monetary wise? Why don't we, why don't we just keep pushing out features? And we're like, no, we have to like scale back and like think about are these features even useful? And like from my research, it's from it's they're not useful or users not using this and being able to communicate that it's super important and I'll, I'll give it to Blynn. <laughs> Thank you and sorry I didn't mention it earlier um I currently work at CHIT I'm a UX designer slash um, human-centered design analyst for some of you that can't see the chat but for a soft skill in my opinion is relationship building um, I find that um, in large companies and where I work right now I'm working with multiple stakeholders such as developers um, architects, um, be, uh, business analysts, and project managers. So something for me is be willing to reach out and um, learn how to build relationships with individuals within your company, because it will take you far. If you don't know something, go ahead and ask a question, because that will lead to you building that relationship with that individual and potentially gaining a new role of promotion in the long run. Yeah, I think those are all great. Um, we don't typically touch on soft skills, which I think are like the, the most important, <laughs> um, to be honest, but okay. So there's some questions here about the program and like the length it took to finish. I will quickly give a brief overview before you all start saying CJ and throwing acronyms here and there. Um, sure. so, um, Av Academy has the UX UI foundations program. Um, that can be done anywhere from four to 16 weeks. Um, now we have different kind of timelines for you. Once you finish that, you can apply to the Career Jumpstart program. And during the Career Jumpstart program, you do work on some real world projects and then we help you find a job. There's like a job search phase to it. Um, so with that background and Career Jumpstart is abbreviated as CJ, which you'll hear probably folks refer to as the CJ program. Um, so there's a question here about how hard was the program and how long did it take to finish? Um, so Courtney, if you want to maybe say like, when did you start foundations? When did you start CJ? And then how long it took you to find a job? And then if you want to talk about how hard it was, <laughs> you can throw that in there as well. Sure. Um, so I started foundations October of last year, and then I didn't finish until April 2020, but that was not all foundations. I decided to quit my assistant job while I was in the middle of it because I just really wanted to focus on UX. So I took a little bit of a break in between. Um, I would say it probably took like a little bit over the three months, like if I take out my break and then career jumpstart, I did from April to, I guess, end of September. And then the job search was from the end of June through the end of September. Um, I didn't find foundation super difficult. It's definitely a lot to learn and it's a lot of reading. So you have to be pretty self-disciplined, but I just found it to be really fun and interesting. And I think that was kind of my, uh, how I knew that it was something I should really seriously, uh, pursue because I was just finding it so fun and interesting and it didn't feel like work and I'll pass it to Blaine. 
All right. So my journey was pretty quick. I'm very surprised, but also thankful for Avocado Me and CJ. Um, I started uh, foundations in February 2022. I'm looking down because I took notes here on where, when I did this, but I completed um, foundations in July of 2022. It did take me time. Um, I was working full time and doing the foundations course at the same time. And I say this because it is doable. Um, a lot of people have questions in terms of if they can balance a full time job while taking an additional course. I think it's doable. Um, and like Courtney said, being disciplined and willing to do the work will help you. And you also have a support system of mentors and other students doing the exact same thing. So that will carry you on throughout their foundations um, course. Um, my job search um, took about six weeks, believe it or not, it was a hard six weeks, um, but I will say I'm thankful for CJ and the portfolio building aspect and the real client work that you'll be getting um, really contributed to my success. So. Um, yeah, I did that from February until I got my job in October 2022. So and I'll pass it over. Months, is that like eight, eight months? About eight months. Start yep. to finish. Yeah. Yep. Start and to then finish. You, you found your job through a past CJ grad, right? Like that was Perfect. the the story. Yeah. So we had a past CJ grad leave their current job, let us know, and then we submitted Blaine for the job. And that's how you ended up at, at the current role, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I will say CJ did help me with that uh, reference and connecting me with an alumni and that could be your um, path as well. And I'm really thankful for that. So I'll pass it over to Kelly. Hello. So I did foundations. I started like, I think like January, Jan yeah, January 7th, like very early on. I finished foundations late March and I actually could have finished earlier, but I really took the time to, you know, utilize the unlimited mentorship. And so I was bugging all the mentors, like, look at my screens, like make sure they're pixel perfect. I really wanted to um, hone in on my skills because the jump from foundations to career jumpstart is huge. Um, like your work, you work with clients. So you actually have to make sure everything's perfect. You can't like technically, you know, you have to really try to make sure that you are, you know, self-sufficient and independent and like really able to like look at these designs because the, the turnaround in foundations is around like eight weeks, but the turnaround in like a uh, career jumpstart can be four to six weeks and you're working with different people, which technically saves you time, but there's just so many things happening at once that you really have to have like a good handle on things. Um, I was uh, not employed during the time I was in foundations. So I spent about eight hours a day and I was really reiterating things to the point that my mentors were like, it's fine, Kelly. I'm like, but I can change this one thing. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I did, I started career jumpstart in um, April and then I, finished my portfolio um, in middle of May. I took a vacation. I needed to visit my grandma. <laughs> I took, and then I did, um, during that time I asked, and then after that I came back, I did another project um, the entirety of June. And then I actually started um, job searching uh, late June. And then I have, I had, there was a, there's a whole issue about this. If you join, um, um, career jump site, Maka will warn you against my mistake, but I basically made a huge mistake, which kind of slowed me down. But um, after we fixed that, I got a bunch of interviews. I did about 45 interviews in the span of two months and a half. And then I got my official, I got two offers um, right before September started. And then I took a long break before I started my job in September. Nice, congrats to all of you. Um, so that, yeah. So I think you all had pretty typical like processes like I think Kelly and Courtney it took you guys not six weeks like it was it was like a longer period of time to find job which is typical um Blaine you did it super quick but I think if it would have been for their fro you would have also done it super quick you were like on top of it <laughs> um so yeah I think you all have pretty like typical kind of stories about length wise which is great Sometimes on here, we have folks that found jobs in like two days. And I have to like warn everybody like that is not typical. <laughs> so this is this is great that we have a little bit, you know, of everything from the, the spectrum. Um, so let's see. Next question. Was it difficult finding your first job after foundations or career jumpstart? How long did it take? So I think we just kind of we covered that. Um, we can maybe talk about the job search process, right? Like I think everybody has questions about that. And 
I would love for you guys to be honest about the roller coaster and how hard it is, but also maybe like if you felt supported and like, who did you lean on? Like, did you join our daily call? Did you lean on other folks? Um, Kelly, do you want to kick us off? We'll go backwards. For sure. So I was definitely a like a permanent person in the daily calls until I got kicked off. <laughs> um, I was always there um, even before I started job searching because it's really interesting to hear about everyone else's journey. Um, one of the my biggest supporters um, was a person uh, who was in my team for one of my projects. And we were, she, she actually got a job really quickly, unfortunately for me. And then um, she would hear me like just cry. I literally cried during a job search. It, it's tough. It's really hard. And um, take it from me. I had four different jobs. Like I've gone through all different kinds of like job searches. There's nothing quite like the tech job search. Like you will, you just have to accept the fact that you will send like applications into a void. I think I was around like 600, 700 applications. And I obviously I had like 45 interviews, but at the same time, when you just keep sending these applications, you feel like, oh my God, like what's happening? And it's totally normal. Everyone experiences this, this, there's a, there's a whole algorithm. Like Maka was like, oh yeah, this is totally normal. And I'm like, why is it normal? <laughs> so it was definitely hard. And, but having the support of like mentors prep you for interviews, like I crushed all my portfolio reviews um, because I did, I had the help of portfolio mentors and then my portfolio was good. And I had the help of all the other students as well, like helping me be like, oh, these are questions I asked or like, here's this, like, this is what the things I did. So it, the, not only are the mentors and the structure of the um, of CJ and foundation is really good. The people that you meet, everyone's trying to get a job. Everyone's trying to build a network and everyone's trying to help you. So that's irreplaceable. So I'll pop it over to Courtney. Yeah, um, my job search was definitely the roller coaster. I felt like I was an insane person probably for that like entire three and a half months. But now looking back, like my job is so good now. I'm like, oh, that was nothing. Like that was so worth it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it took about three and a half months. I also sent out, I think a little bit over 500 applications. I had around 30 interviews and three final rounds, I think. Um, I would say career jumpstart. I don't understand how people could do a career transition like this without career jumpstart. The way it's laid out, they really gave every single thing we needed. And every time I had a problem, Maka would be like, well, did you do this? Or are you sending out this many applications, whatever? And I'd be like, no. And then once I changed and did what she said, suddenly I would be getting interview requests again. Um, and the daily calls were great. Um, and I really leaned on the people from my first project that I worked on. We just had like a really good chemistry and like, same thing, Kelly, like I was calling them on FaceTime, like crying, like, oh my God, I got rejected from another job, but just having other people going through the same thing was irreplaceable. Like, I just can't imagine trying to go through that process without having that support and kind of that outlet. Um, and a lot of those people were great connections because they would get jobs and then be like, Hey, we're actually hiring for three or four other positions. So you kind of then have an in with all these companies because you're networking so much in career jumpstart with your like fellow students. Pass it to Blaine. So I agree with you, Courtney and Kelly. It is a tough, tough, tough journey. Um, I had to lean a lot on my support system, family, and the CJ and Avocado team in terms of um, what's going on in terms of my interview process. I joined the daily calls um, before my uh, job application process to see what tips and tricks can I learn from other individuals that are in the interviewing process. That helped me tremendously. Um, I built a network and also improved my LinkedIn. That was a huge part of my job process. Um, I created a network. And if any of you want to join, you can. It's a Black designers um, call. It's for an hour on a Saturday where a bunch of designers and other people interested in UX join and just talk about where they are. That truly helped set the tone of you know, building relationships, especially when there were job opportunities and interviews. Um, Informational calls were extremely helpful, just cold calling people um, on LinkedIn and saying, hey, can we have a 15 minute or five minute coffee chat about your experience about UX? And a lot of people were open to that, you know, making those calls short, they were open to having that discussion. Um, and then also the mentor 
Um, the mentors and the career coaches within CJ were incredibly helpful. I reviewed my portfolio and did interview practice when it came to behavioral interviews every weekend. I did cry at one point because I really wanted to get a job and I had about 19 interviews in three final rounds, um, which of course led to an emotional um, experience, but I will say I'm really thankful for it. Um, and I will say some people aren't familiar with how uh, many interviews you could have or how many rounds. And I'm sure you guys can attest to this that some rounds were between three to five. I did experience one five round interview, which was extremely long, but the process is worth it. And just to let you all know, it's practice for the next interview and the next potential employer. So um, yeah, that's a little bit of my job search process. Awesome, thank you all for sharing. Um, this next question is really about like the learning curve in the program. And then how do you handle, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll label it imposter syndrome, right? How'd you handle the, uh, you can't do this or you're not good enough um, and, and not just like give up, right? Um, I think something that's different now than when you all started CJ, right? Like, so in foundations, everybody's working alone and it, you depend on like your own skills and you have time and we're pretty flexible on like when you have to complete things. And then when you go into career jumpstart, we've now added actually a two week advanced design skills period to make sure that everybody is on the same page when they start these client projects because the client projects move really fast. Kelly mentioned this, right? Like there are four to six week long projects and they're moving very fast. You have to contribute. You have to know how to use the tools. Um, so we did see there was a big learning curve from foundations to CJ, right? Because it's it's no longer just individual work at your own pace. So we've, we've added that two week period that I think is you know helping folks now. Um, but aside from that kind of jump from foundations to CJ, did you all feel like it was a huge learning curve um, as you were learning UX? And then how did you deal with the imposter syndrome? Whoever wants to go, Courtney, Blaine. I, I yeah. can start. Yeah. Um, personally, I don't feel that it was a huge learning curve. The only reason why I say this is because I did spend a lot of time in addition to the readings and the material within foundations to do other coursework to better prepare me for CJ. Um, there were some difficult moments because you're going to have to work with other designers as well. So their thought process, their critical thinking and their decision making, you're going to have to work with those people. So I think that would be the learning curve of working with other designers and new designers um, and how they make certain decisions. And I'll pass it over to Kelly. So how I like to think about like foundations versus CJ is that in foundations, it's like you're reading a recipe book, right? You're reading all the instructions. You're like, la, you know, like I'm going to do A, B, C, and D. And then CJ is like, when you're actually in the kitchen and you're like, oh, I don't have vanilla extract or, oh, I don't have flour. What can I do to substitute it? So CJ is very, it's very close ish to work where like you have to adapt to the situation sometimes the client you, you maybe you submit a design and you think like oh my god this is the best design ever like they're gonna love it and the client the client hates it and you're like i don't understand how they hate it and you have to figure out you have you know client it's a client so you have to figure it out like how can i either communicate better so the client likes it or change the design so the client will like it like at the end of the day like how to make things the client like it so there was definitely um a learning curve there but also a second there is like when you work in foundations you're working by yourself you're doing everything by yourself so you you completely know what's happening in the file that you're working with but when you work in CJ, you work with um, different people with different strengths and weaknesses. Um, and so sometimes um, you really have to support each other in CJ. And that takes a certain level of skill and communication when you have to communicate with your um, teammates, which is something you have to do in, um, in, in work too. I work in the team of 10 designers. Um, even though we don't work in the same pod, we have to agree on every single UI change. And it's a struggle. Like I, I, I feel like the most junior all the time. And I'm like, I don't understand why this doesn't work. And they're like arguing, it's like a five minute argument. And this is something that you get used to in CJ. And sometimes that can be really hard because um, when you're starting out, 
you might feel like really attached to your designs and you're like, oh, like I put so much time into this. I put, but one thing as you learn as you go through CJ is don't get attached to your designs. Like they, they don't represent you. They're just something that you made and then you can make something else later. And so I think that transition is really hard for some people. And I'll pass off to Courtney. Yeah, uh, two things come to mind for the learning curve. One is like in a design thinking way, I think getting used to thinking about things of user first instead of aesthetic first. I think a lot of us, when we think of design, we're thinking about how something looks. So really going back to basics, like I think wire framing was actually the hardest activity for me. And it still is because I want to go in and add all the specifics. I want to add the colors. I want to make it look pretty and wire framing which I know that's like a term not everyone's going to be familiar with right now, but it's a part of the UX process. And it really brings it back down to basics of what is the user experience. So I think just getting into that mindset was a learning curve. And then also just from the logistical side, learning the tools. Um, I did some student success mentoring for foundations, and that was probably like one of the biggest hurdles that students brought up when I reached out to them was um, like questions about Figma and feeling like Figma was taking a really long time to learn. So if you're doing the program, I definitely recommend investing the time to learn Figma or whatever it is the software you choose and like really learning about um, like just all the ways you can make your life easier in Figma. Um, there's still things today that I'll learn. And I'm like, wow, I wish I knew this three months ago because that would have made X design a lot easier to do and would have saved me hours. So it's really worth putting an extra time to learn more about Figma. Um, and then as far as like imposter syndrome, and like, how do you not just quit? I guess I just think of like, well, what's the alternative? <laughs> like going back to being an assistant, that's just not my uh, life journey. That's not where I'm the happiest. So even though there's obstacles and challenges and times where I really doubt myself, like the alternative is something I don't want. So I just have to keep pushing forward. I don't have another choice. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, I love that you brought up the Figma thing. I don't know if you all saw, but last week we actually started doing live Figma classes every week. Um, so every Wednesday night we have live Figma um, classes that we have some of our design mentors teaching. Um, Can I join? And <laughs> yeah, send me a DM. And I'll yeah, <laughs> get me on that invite. Hold on. Yeah, so we're we're trying to kind of, you know, adjust right to the things that people are struggling with the most. And it's also interesting. Um, I feel like folks are always like, oh, I wish I knew about X, Y, Z, right? Like, let's say auto layout or components. Um, but you also have to think about that when you were starting, right? Like, if we would have been like, here's auto layout, you would have been like, but I don't know how to make a rectangle, right? Or I don't know how to do this. And it becomes really overwhelming. So we're always trying to find a way to balance like, not overwhelming you so you don't give up right and also teaching you enough right so we're, we're we're currently finding a way to like teach the basics and then if you get that move on to the next thing and then the next thing rather than be like use a million things and frame everything and make sure it's responsive and then we confuse everybody that's just starting out um so i think for those of you listening you know there's we, we try and break it down in a way that like makes sense and as soon as you get something you can go to the next level and the next level and if you don't get something you can get on a one-on-one -on -one call with someone that will explain it to you um but cool so the next question is about referrals to jobs as part of career jumpstart so we do have some industry partners that come to us when they're hiring um and then we also have past grads, and I think it was mentioned a couple of times, that come to us and post in our actual like grad Slack group saying, hey, we're hiring, right? Like if you're looking for your second job or whatever. Um, and through that, we then post in Career Jumpstart and like submit folks to it. So um, we've had a couple of people get hired as like the second or third person to fill a role from a company because they trust that our grads, yeah, Blaine is one of them. They trust that our grads kind of know their stuff, right? Um, so for Blaine, we had a past student say, Hey, I got a new job, pays a lot more. We had like, we got to backfill this role. I submitted, I think it was yours and two other students information, and you ended up getting the job and it was a much less competitive, <laughs> right. Process. Cause there was only a couple of you, um, going through that. So we do, we do refer students, um, as part of the program. Um, the next question is what makes Apple Academy different than any, than another online bootcamp or course. 
um who wants to go and maybe you can talk about like your own experience like why did you choose Alpha Academy over other courses um Kelly do you or Blaine yeah I, I see can you go. yeah um so before I decided in making my decision of which UX um course foundations boot camp that I wanted to take I did compare different um, courses and programs to see what would work best for me. But then also I wanted a course that would give me the foundation, but also help me build a product or a portfolio, for example, so I can showcase that for my work and have that when I um, do my interviews. So um, Avocadomy um, and CJ had that and other programs didn't have that real world um, client experience that I was looking for. It just seemed that I would learn the material and not get the support after or experience with real clients um, or other UX designers. So that's why I chose uh, Above Academy. I saw that there was a path and a network that I could build off of. Uh, of and um, yeah, that's how I made my decision. And I'll pass it over to Courtney. Yes, um, I did not do too much competitive shopping. Honestly, I'm a little bit impulsive. So I was like, all right, I'll do it. Um, but I think what really drew me to Avo Academy was actually hearing Maka's story. It was, I don't know if it's still on the site, but at one point um, there was like a link to a video of Maka talking about how Avo Academy came about. And I was like, she went through this, she did a career transition like this and she did it all on her own. So she has that experience. So who better to then teach others how to do it? Whereas some of the other boot camps are, you know, kind of run by larger companies who might not have that kind of firsthand experience. And then I'll also say the mentorship, both experiencing it from the student side and then also seeing how it works on the back end. Like I can truly say every single person at Avo Academy wants you to succeed and will do whatever they can to help you. And that's just not something you're going to get with every boot camp. Kelly. So I am a, uh, I do a lot of competitive. I think my competitive research did a span two months, okay? <laughs> Before I set up my academy. Um, so I as I touched on before that um my friend uh was a UX designer and she's actually a senior designer now at her company. So she made a change through a boot camp as well. So I asked her, I was like, okay, what are the top five things I need to look for in a boot camp? And then she said, hands down, uh real real clients. She's like, having that is irreplaceable. And then being able to um being able to do uh, a certain amount of projects. I did five projects, including my foundation. So it's three client projects. I hope that also answers one of the questions in the chat. Um, you usually, you make your portfolio after in total three, so two clients, but I did one more just because it's, it's better to have more projects and you can talk about more, you feel more confident by the fourth project. Um, but I did a lot of research. I talked to a lot of different bootcamp, um, you know, the, when you ask like, oh, let, let's do all these things. So I did, I talked to General Assembly. I talked to uh, Design Lab. I found alumni from both of those. I talked to, I also talked to those people. Um, I messaged Maka. <laughs> and then um, uh, there was a bunch of other ones that were really popular. I didn't want to go anywhere in person, but there, everything was like online. So it was not a big deal. But overall, um, a lot what really attracted me was okay first off price come on like have you seen the prices of everyone it's like 40k like it's ridiculous it's truly ridiculous um but secondly is um as a career changer i think it's really important to um do with other people who are career changers so i spoke to a lot um of designers who are who you know at big companies like meta or like facebook and they'll be like oh yeah i went to like a four-year program like that's great for you, but it's not great for like, it's not really use, useful for me. Um, so I was looking at Up Academy and just how like tight knit everyone was and how I really like how we have a share your wins channel where we can see each other's like stats and how everyone's doing and like um, like their background and you can message these people. Um, a lot of the people that I connected with through, um, through, through the program was just they posted their wins like that they posted like that oh i got a job and i'm like oh that background looks like my background let me ask her about uh, ask her questions and you develop a relationship with that and you can like really build it oh, understand like okay like so my background in healthcare or my background in research can be applied this way and you can actually start seeing these patterns it's really funny and sometimes like, people ask me i'm like oh you should talk to this person they're like oh i already reached out because so everyone's really willing to help and i think that's one thing i really enjoyed um 
I also like the fact that oh, I think Maka talked about how you 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 guys probably heard that she said, oh, we now have a two week part program because every like I feel like every month there's something new. The 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 content is not old. And then that's one issue I kind of had with General Assembly. Um, I was looking at the content. I'm like, this is this Figma looks old. Like, you know, this is not updated. Like, you know, and so it's really good to have like a smaller community that always updates. And here's the concerns of students versus like a very large corporation that's kind of like, let's get as much money and pump out, you know, designers, you know, so that's kind of why ultimately I chose uh, Avocadme. <laughs> yeah. Um... That's interesting to hear. Um, I thought you all were gonna say our, our great TikTok content and me in this avocado costume, but I'll, I'll take the, the comparative shopping. <laughs> um, that's awesome. So I think we touched on this next question, which is how many projects do you get to work on during Career Jumpstart? I'm gonna do a quick overview and then we'll do like a fast fire. How many total projects did you have in your portfolio? Um, so in foundations, you work on one project and that's end to end, kind of Kelly mentioned this, it's every step of the way, right? Eight through Z. Um, when you join Career Jumpstart now, you're gonna work on one individual project that's gonna take less than a week. It's a very short one. You have a couple of different ones to pick from and that's to help you kind of advance your design skills. And then you have to do two real world client projects minimum. Um, and then we encourage you to start applying. So you're, you're now looking at four projects before you start applying which is a recent change, like I mentioned. Um, and then while you're applying, you can keep doing as many projects as you'd like in CJ if you have the time to do your applications as well as continue working on projects. Um, what we see typically is after you finish your second one, folks start coming back as leads for projects. So you can come in and say, I'm gonna lead this next team of folks that just started CJ and you gain a little bit more confidence that way. Um, so right now, if you do foundations, you'll get one and then you'll get three in CJ, two of those being real world, like um, uh, real world, like collaborative projects with other designers, clients, et cetera. Um, let's do fast fire. Courtney, why don't you tell us how many total projects did you have in your portfolio when you got a job or finished? Yeah, I had one foundations and two client projects. So three total. Cool. Lane. Hi guys, so I have one foundations project and three CJ projects that I um, have to finish up my last one and put it on my portfolio. <laughs> I think I already mentioned that I also have one foundations and I finished my three, at my three. So everything's locked right now, but um, I had my three and I talked about uh, two out of the three projects during all, most of my, um, my portfolio uh, interviews. Cool. Um, the next question is around salary. Um, so I'll, I'll give some averages and then if you guys feel comfortable going around sharing like a range or a number, or you can totally pass, I, you do not have to share. Um, but on average folks finishing CJ are averaging around the 85 K mark. It's leaning towards 85 to 95 right now, but, uh, historically it's been 85, um, the US average is 65K for entry level. And we look at entry level because most of these folks like you, you've seen on this call do not have previous design experience. Um, so US average is 65, CJ grad average is around 85K. And then the range that we've seen is pretty crazy. So we've seen all the way from like 55K all the way to $187,000 starting. Um, None of these people had previous design experience. Uh, sometimes the people that are getting the 180K are not better designers than the people getting 100K, right? It's just like a big range in the industry and the type of company you're working in, things like that. Um, so average number you should be looking at is 85. We can def definitely help you do certain things to get you that six-figure job if you're looking for that. Um, but 85 is, is kind of the number I would hold on to there. Um, Kelly, do you want to kick us off? And please, nobody feel pressured to share. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, so I, my boyfriend works as a software engineer, and he works at eBay now. Just want to put that perspective. So this, that's his second job. I make more than him in his first job, even though he graduated from a four-year college in computer science. So um, he, he obviously now makes more than me in his second job, but his first job, I make 
significantly more than him. So that's perspective. Um, I was making $18, $19 an hour, my previous job. So my increase is 2.5 times. I make just under six figures. And I didn't try to negotiate more because I'm like, already like that's a lot of pressure on me for my first job. Um, I know a lot of people can uh, ask for more but sometimes like when you're when you're in your first job like this is ridiculous 2.5 like times your previous salary like I, I can't handle that like so even though you see I, one thing I like to tell people who are trying to get into this program is that yes six, six, six figures seems amazing it's am like and you want to get it immediately but you also have to realize that this is not going to be your only job you're going to get in that job like next year next two years you know and you're going to make that huge jump so if you like just think about your current salary and then think about the jump that you would make. Like, I'm really happy about my salary. Um, but it's, it's easy to get like delusional with all these 160, like 60K people. But one thing that um, uh, they, Maka mentioned that they may not be great designers, they, but also another thing that I happen to notice is that a lot of them are masters. And you, not to say you need a master's um, to be in this program at all. You need a degree in this program. Um, but uh, that's one other thing that adds another layer of complexity to the, to the salaries. Um, and I'll pop this off to Courtney. Sure. So my salary, when I include my bonus, is around $105,000. And then I also have stock that came with my offer that adds um, base another five figures. But obviously, if the company does well, that means I'll also do well. Um, and also just like an amazing benefits package, like my health care is so much better than my last job. Like my overall deductions are actually less than my previous job because the company is covering more. So not only am I making more base, but then I'm also getting more value from my benefits. And then just like for perspective, one of the other jobs I was in a final round for, that salary was $110,000. Um, and then some of like the contract roles, like you'll get like recruiters reaching out to you for jobs that are like $70 an hour, which I'll let y'all do the math on it. But definitely some of those contract roles can be some seriously good money. So <laughs> there's good money out there. <laughs> I'll go. Um, so I'm pretty excited about this. I will say I didn't ever think I would reach this number, but I'm not going to share the number exactly, but I jumped uh, by $25,000 from my current salary where I used to work. Um, and I will say I didn't think that could happen within the span of eight months. Um, most jobs in the current job that I was in had a four or 5% increase every year. So that wasn't really going to do much for me in terms of how I wanted to live my life and to have that flexibility. Um, so I will say by next year, fingers crossed, six figures, um, but I'm happy with this. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Congrats, y'all. Um, I think we have one last question. Um, and actually, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you all a question so you can prepare while I answer the question that's on here. So the question I want to ask you all is um, if you were to give your past self before you started Apple Academy a piece of advice, what advice would that be? And while you all think, I'm going to jump into the question that was asked here about age. So there's a question here that says, do you think age is a negative or positive factor in a job in UX UI? Um, looking and listening to all of you, you all are young. Just wondering if anyone who's looking into this academy is over 50. Um, so there's we have a couple of blog articles around this. Uh, there, I think we always get like, am I too young? Am I too old? Uh, both sides of the spectrum, right? So. Um, for folks that are just graduating high school or just graduating college and have no previous work experience, it does become a little bit more difficult than somebody that has 10 years of work experience, right, or 15 years of work experience. The reason that that's the case is because of the soft skills. The first question that was asked, right, the soft skills, the professionalism, um, those things come through in interviewing. And there's only so many soft skills we can teach you during those mock interviews and that period of job search help that if you have had, you know, years of experience, like, you know, Courtney working as an executive admin, like, you know how to send an email, we don't have to teach you how to send an email, even though there is a lesson on how to send an email in, in the course, right? So the being too young may kind of help, may take you a little bit longer, because the person has to take a chance on your, your design skills being new, as well as your work experience being new, right? There, there's almost like two things they have to, to take uh, a chance on. Um, and then I think when you're older, like 
I don't think it works against you, to be honest, right? Like if you can get a good, I think it's a plus. <laughs> I know you guys are, are nodding your head, but it's a plus. You differentiate yourself from all the folks that are, you know, kind of younger in the job search. It instills trust in people that you're able to hold a job or you've had some sort of job. You have much more experience that helps you understand people, which is like the number one thing you have to do in this career. Um, so I think as long as you can put in the work to understand how to use the tools, right? Like the, the technology aspect is the only downside I would say is like, we, we've had students that are older start CJ and like they didn't know how to copy paste, right? So we got on a one-on-one -on -one mentor session and taught them how to copy paste. So you can see how that would be a little bit of a longer learning curve to go from like learn how to copy paste all the way to like designing wireframes in Figma to finishing, you know, your UI and doing that project. Um, so I think if you can get a handle on the tech piece, which we're happy to help in foundations, being older is an advantage. <laughs> it was going to be my, my long answer. Um, we do have folks that are older in the program and they have an easier time finding jobs than the younger folks. Um, so that that's my answer to that question. And I hope it helps. And thank you for the costume. I just ran out. I just ran out of uh, battery on my thing. So it's completely deflated. <laughs> um, awesome. So uh, Kat said, I'm for sure signing up. Anyone want to buddy up? We can cry on each other's shoulders while we work. We actually have an AVO Buddies program that one of our, uh, Vanessa, who leads our student success team runs. So when you do sign up, if nobody on this call wants to be your buddy, find that because you can get an accountability buddy <laughs> through the program. Um, but let's jump to that last question. Uh, what piece of advice would you give, um, would you give your, you know, eight months ago self before you, you decided to, to join this program? Um, Blaine, do you want to kick us off? Sure. Um, I will say eight months ago, find out your why, why you're doing this and what, what is the reason for it? I will, the reason why I say that is finding out your whys will help better set you for success in what terms of what you want to look for, whether it's a UX generalist, specialist, designer, architect, there's so many different things in UX that you could become. Um, so for me, I would say find out my why. I didn't really set like ideas of why I wanted to do this initially, like a hardcore three I wanted to do, but eventually throughout the program and career jumpstart, I was able to nail what I wanted uh, for myself professionally. I'll pass it over to Courtney. Yeah, I think the advice I would give myself is to not write myself out and to have more confidence. Um, I think, you know, especially with the job search, I don't think I really started selling my past experience until over halfway through the job search. Um, and that was because I didn't think my past experience was good enough. And the whole, am I good enough for this is definitely a theme that comes in so many different parts of this from foundations through group the client projects through career jumpstart and interviewing and now even like having the job but like I got my I just started two weeks ago I got my first assignment and I'm like oh my god do I actually know how to do this <laughs> and I do but there's always kind of that self-doubt so I think my biggest advice would be to have that confidence believe in myself and know that whether it's getting an interview or someone extending an offer or even a mentor just providing positive feedback that they're doing that for a reason and I'm not some imposter and that, you know, I'm doing good work and the foundations provided a really good foundations for all of us to enter the market. Um, I have a couple things I would say to myself. <laughs> I would say don't take two months just, just to sign up. <laughs> I was definitely, I was talking to, I remember talking, I distinctly remember the conversation. I was like, I was like, why didn't I sign up early? Like, why did it take two months to like research? It's like, I just spent, I could have been making two more months of salary guys. Come on. Like, <laughs> but um, another thing was, um, so I thought that like, with all my experience with interviewing everything that I was like, I don't need that much help with the interviewing. I needed help. Okay, guys. <laughs> I needed help. Um, it wasn't, I, I wasn't getting through the first interviews and I was like really sad, like what's not working? Cause this line has worked every single other interview. It's, it's, but things are different, you know, uh, everything's changing, but the, having the mentors being like, Hey, like you should change your, tell me about yourself. And I was like, Oh really? And after that, like 
smooth sailing from there and then reaching out for help. I am a very kind of independent person. I kind of have to be, um, you know, I think everyone is when you're, if you're on this call, you're self-independent. You're like, oh, I can do this. Reaching out to help and telling myself it's okay to ask for help. is like, it's a, it's such a, it's something I still struggle with at work. I'm like, sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't want to ask my teammate this, you know, but it's something I wish that I got out of my system faster. And knowing that people are there to help you like everyone is very happy to help you if you guys find me on ux avocados and message me later on be like hell kelly help me i'll be like okay what can i do to help you you know it's being um being open to that help and just knowing that like, even if you can't figure out what's wrong like i remember asking maka like, maka like look at my portfolio for like the 50th time like something must be wrong <laughs> and she looks for the 50th time she's like i think things are fine but we can change this and then we do things and you know things help but um being open to that and also like touching on the imposter syndrome like every week i go to my boyfriend i cry i'm like i can't be a product designer i'm not meant for this you know and then it, it happens I, it happens i've talked to tons of people who are like five years into their career and like 10 years into their career and it always happens and you have to really understand it's not that you don't really understand like you just don't understand the process and as long as you have faith and understanding that you can learn which if you do this boot camp you know you can learn anything like you will be fine <laughs> so yeah Thank you all. That's um, super helpful. Um, I love doing these calls because I love seeing you all through the through the roller coaster and now on kind of the other side. Um, Kelly, you mentioned UX Avocados. UX Avocados is like our alumni Slack group. So for people that finish foundations and finish foundations or finish career jumpstart, you'll get added to that group and then you'll be able to talk to all of the past grads and there's a job board in there. There's so much cool stuff. And then we do calls every other week uh, for CJ grads, which I think I've added most of you to. Um, and we talk on different topics. So just, I think like a month ago, we were talking about imposter syndrome with folks that graduated like CJ two years ago, right? And they're talking about kind of how they deal with it. Um, so even when you're done with CJ, there's still like a community and um, I, I love seeing how you all like make friends and kind of like lean on each other. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for joining today. I know y'all are very busy with your, your fancy new UX jobs, um, but thank you for joining and sharing. Uh, for those of you listening, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email info at avocademy.com. Um, I think Sadi shared here a coupon we have that expires tonight, 11.59 p.m. Eastern for anybody that's looking. Um, it's the biggest coupon we've done to date. <laughs> so we'll take advantage if you're thinking about it. Um, and yeah, reach out to these folks on LinkedIn. I think you all shared your, your LinkedIn there. Um, and we appreciate you all joining on Halloween. Bye, y'all. Bye, guys.